we're on to a new organ system, the skeletal system. And as you know, the skeletal system is made up of bones, cartilage, uh, ligaments that hold the bones together. But before we get into learning the 206 bones of the human body, we learn about the tissue that forms bone. So this, this module is titled Bone Tissue. And we've talked a little bit about tissues uh, in that tissues are cells working together and bone tissue is an example of a connective tissue uh, where that tissue is largely dependent upon the, what kind of extracellular matrix it has. A single bone though contains more than just bone tissue. A single bone contains cartilage, it contains some of the dense connective tissues, it has epithelial tissue in it, it has blood vessels, so it has blood in it, it has adipose tissue, it has nerves, so there's nervous tissue. So a single bone is actually an organ. It's many tissues working together. But this PowerPoint talks more about the bone tissue component and how this bone tissue is maintained, what it, what it needs to be healthy and strong yet flexible. So we're going to get into more of the tissue level in this PowerPoint. And the next topic then will be actually learning all those bones of the human body. But let's begin by talking about some of the important functions of our skeletal system. I think we know that bones provide a support, a framework uh, for the body. Uh, it helps maintain a structural component of the entire body. It protects a lot of our internal organs. Uh, the obvious one that comes to mind is your brain is protected by your, your cranial cavity of the skull. Uh, your heart and lungs are protected by ribs and the sternum. Uh, and many other organs are found uh, protected by, by bones. Uh, obviously, bones are moved using muscles, so skeletal muscles move the bones, which then will assist and cause the body to move. Bones store a lot of minerals. Uh, the two most abundant minerals found in bones are calcium and phosphorus. So what bones can do is store these minerals, but then also release them when necessary. So one of the most important topics we're going to talk about uh, in this module is the ability of bones to help maintain blood levels of calcium and phosphorus. So if you go for a period of time without consuming enough dietary calcium, your bones will make sure that that calcium level in your blood is adequate, so the bones will release calcium into the bloodstream. If there's high calcium, the bones will then take this calcium out of the bloodstream and store it. So that's a really important topic that we're going to be getting into uh, in this module. And then another important topic is production of blood cells. So blood we cover a lot more in A and P2, uh, but you can already appreciate our bones in this uh, process called hemopoiesis. Hemopoiesis is the production of blood cells. Uh, we produce red blood cells. We produce white blood cells, and we produce platelets in tissue called red bone marrow. The last function is the bones also have a large amount of fat in them. Uh, you don't think about bones as being a place to find uh, fat, uh, but there's a number of adipocytes inside uh, bone, which we call this kind of cluster of adipocytes yellow bone marrow or yellow marrow. And this yellow marrow marrow uh, kind of accumulates with age, so as we age we get more and more uh, yellow bone marrow. Okay, let's begin by first talking about basic types of bones. Uh, this is one way we can categorize a bone just largely based on its shape. You have long bones, so long bones are longer than they are wide. Uh, long bones are typically found in your appendages, your arms and legs. 
you have short bones. Short bones are, as the name suggests, they're kind of short. They're often kind of cube or block shaped. Uh, we're going to look at a lot of short bones in the wrist. Uh, your carpals, there's about, there is eight carpals in your wrist, and they're all classified as short bones. We have some flat bones, uh, like the sternum is a flat bone that protects your heart and other organs of the chest. A lot of your bones of the cranium that form a cavity surrounding your brain are flat bones. Then you have a category called irregular bones, which can't really be placed in any of the other three categories because they have a lot of processes sticking off of them. So a vertebra is very strange looking. It's got a body. It's got some processes that stick off of it. So it's a very irregularly shaped bone. The final category is called sesamoid bones. Sesamoid bones are found within a tendon. Uh, the, the number one example of a sesamoid bone. So if you ever see that word sesamoid and, and it's in the context of asking you, it's typically talking and referring to the patella or kneecap. A sesamoid bone is found completely encircled or surrounded by tendon. Uh, so we'll look more about at the patella later on, but uh, it's found within what's called the quadricep femoris tendon. So those are different types of bones. We're going to look a little closer at long bones. Long bones have basic structural features, and if you learn a long bone and the structural features, you can you can connect that to all long bones. So all long bones, whether they're in the arms or the legs, have certain things in common. The first thing we're going to look at is called the epiphysis. Epiphysis is singular, but a long bone will always have two epiphyses. So you just change the I to an E, and that makes it plural. The epiphyses are the two ends of the long bone. So notice here we're looking at the humerus, the upper arm bone. And it has a proximal epiphysis, or a proximal end, and a distal epiphysis at the distant or end. Typically, those epiphyses are covered with cartilage. This cartilage helps protect wherever that bone makes contact with another bone. And if you recall, the type of cartilage is hyaline cartilage but we often refer to this cartilage as articular cartilage. An articulation is a joint. So articular cartilage is the cartilage found at a joint. The metaphys is this area here in between the end of the bone and the shaft. The shaft is known as the diaphysis. So metaphys is kind of just in between the, the ends and the shaft. And usually you find a growth plate at the, epiph at the metaphys. Unless that bone has stopped growing, then you would see an epiphyseal line. We'll talk a little more about that later. The diaphysis is the long shaft of a long bone. Uh, inside the diaphysis uh, is the medullary cavity. Um, at the two ends, again, we mentioned is the articular cartilage that protects the bone when it forms a joint. So there's a bone that's going to attach to the humerus here. That's your scapula, or shoulder blade. There's two bones that are going to attach at the distal end of the humerus. Those are your radius and your ulna. So you have to have this articular cartilage at those joints. The epiphyseal line, or plate, is the area of the bone that will grow in order to lengthen the bone. So in order for this humerus to grow in length, it grows at the epiphyseal plate or growth plate. Once the bone has stopped growing, so once we reach the age where our bones are no longer growing in length, that epiphyseal plate becomes an epiphyseal line. Again, we'll talk a little more about how bones grow later on. The endosteum is an inside lining 
to the bone. So endo means inside, osteum means bone. So it's a layer on the inside of the bone. It lines the medullary cavity. The periosteum, peri means surrounding, is the layer surrounding the outside of the bone. Notice it, is, it looks as if both of these have been kind of peeled away. So endosteum and periosteum. Compact versus spongy. These are the two types of bone tissue. Compact bone is typically seen on the outer, more superficial areas of the bone. It is much more dense, much more compact. Gives a lot of strength to that bone. On the inside of the bone, you find a lot of the spongy bone. And you see why it was called spongy bone. Kind of looks like a sponge. This is bone tissue in there, so it does provide a lot of strength, but it has the little spaces, the little pockets in it for bone marrow. So there would be bone marrow tissue found in all these little spaces in the, in the spongy bone. We'll talk more about compact and spongy bone later on as well. So you have bone marrow, red bone marrow found in these little spaces. Uh, and then lastly on the list, we see, again, the medullary cavity, which helps kind of lighten the bone. Uh, these long bones are not solid bone tissue. They would be way too heavy. Uh, but that medullary cavity is going to also contain a lot of marrow. It's going to have some red bone marrow, but mostly yellow bone marrow found in that medullary cavity where the red bone marrow is found more in the spongy bone. So these are typical structures of a long bone. We can apply these to a lot of long bones, uh, like the, even the femur in the leg or the thigh uh, has all the same basic structures. The next video, we're going to start to talk about bone cells that are found in bone.